The swell class athlete Damar Hamlin just dropped to the ground as his heart stopped beating during an NFL game. Today, Damar Hamlin's team confirmed he suffered a cardiac arrest and his heartbeat was restored on the field before he was rushed to the hospital. As Elisa Guerrero reports, doctors are now trying to figure out what went wrong. Life is fragile and this is well demonstrated by the fact that in the time it takes me to say a couple of words, a person dies. Young, old, healthy, unhealthy, accident, disease, we all are a part of the ultimate statistic. 10 out of 10 people die. And though Damar has not died, and I pray that he will not anytime soon, I hope that he and you consider Psalm 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. As Christians, we have to remind people young and old that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to repent and believe. We need to consider the number of our days. Though you may be young, if today is the day of your death, you are very old. We do not know when we will die. We do not know when something similar to what happened to Damar Hamlin might happen to any of us. We simply do not know the hour nor the time when death will knock on our door. So today, while you have the ability to breathe, walk, and speak, I urge you to consider these following four things. Number one, there is a God. Not only that there is a God, there is one God. He has revealed himself by his grace to all people through their conscience and through the evidence of creation. The very reason non-religious people felt the need to pray for a person they do not even know is evidence that they know there is a God to pray to. And this God sent his son Jesus Christ into the world and he dwelt among us. One of his name was given of old was Emmanuel, meaning God with us. He was sent by God to save the world from sin. He was born to die, his sacrificial death being the one thing that could cover the sin of those who would believe in him. And the second thing you need to consider is that you have sinned against God and deserve judgment. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Having fallen away from God, we deserve nothing else but his eternal punishment. Some of us suffer temporal consequences for our sins, but the eternal consequences are far more devastating. God promises to cast sinners into a place called hell if you break even one of his commandments in thought, word, or deed. It doesn't really matter if you say you do not believe in hell or heaven. The word of God says they exist, then let every man be a liar and God be true. Since that is the case, then there is nothing we can do in and of ourselves, humanly speaking, to escape God's wrath. Your only hope as a fallen and condemned sinner is to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, which consists of repenting of your sin and putting your faith in him and him alone. And the third thing we need to consider is that there is an eternity. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27, it is appointed for men to die once and after that comes judgment. And after that judgment, you will end up either in hell eternally or in heaven eternally. Many try to refute the spiritual reality, but deep down they know because God said in his word that he has given men a sense of eternity. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into men's heart. I truly believe this is part of the fear and the response that we see when one of our loved ones dies. We comfort ourselves with the fact that they are in a better place. But outside of repentance and faith in Christ alone, this is not the truth. The biggest form of denial is to bring up all the good works we do. We believe that eternity is good or bad for us based upon our actions in this life. If we are honest, the standards we set for ourselves are pretty low. Why? Because we usually judge ourselves on a sliding scale or a bell curve, thinking that I'm not as good as Mother Teresa, but I'm not as bad as Hitler. However, the reality in the eyes of God is that there is no one who is good, no, not one. Indeed, we are all enemies of God and children of the devil from the time we are born and under condemnation, so all of us are in big trouble when it comes to eternity, which brings me to the last and final point. Why are so many people praying? This is the fear that many people reflect on as all they can do is pray. We were in the midst of absolute tragedy last night. I think you saw some of the beauty of football mm -hmm. as well, that it's brought us all here together. Um, you know, like, this is a little bit different. I heard, I've heard it all day, like thoughts and prayers. And you just heard Scherf and Jonathan Allen say, like, all we can do is pray for him. And, I've heard the Buffalo Bills organization say that we believe in prayer. And maybe this is not the right thing to do, but I want to, it's just on my heart that I want to pray for it. It is. Damar Hamlin right, right, right now. Um, I'm going to do it out loud. I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to bow my head, and I'm just going to pray for him. Um, God, we come to you in these moments that we don't understand, that are hard, uh, because we believe that you're God, and coming to you and praying to you um, has impact. We're, we're sad. We're angry. Um, and we want answers, but some things are unanswerable. We just want to pray, truly come to you. 
and pray for strength for Damar, for healing for Damar, for comfort for Damar, to be with his family, to give them peace. If we didn't believe that prayer didn't work, we wouldn't ask this of you, God. Um, I believe in prayer. We believe in prayer. We lift up Damar Hamlin's name in your name. Amen. 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 They know that they are powerless to help, so they turn to God. We saw this on 9-11. People turning to prayer. These people were religious and irreligious. They were Christians and followers of diverse religions. Prayer is powerful for the Christian. Prayer is powerful for the believer. It is the right through the name of Jesus Christ to access the throne of God, the throne of grace, boldly, according to Hebrews 4.16. And it is only the believer whose prayers are effective because of who they pray to and what he has done in their lives. Christians have been made righteous and it is only the prayer of a righteous man that has results because it is done in Christ's righteousness according to his will. As Christians, we pray according to the will of God, not to fulfill our selfish desires. It is good for Christians to pray for those who are ill, who are suffering, and who have any need. Our prayers for Damar Hamlin's physical healing with an eye to his spiritual healing that he would repent and know Jesus Christ as Savior. We do this as completely ignorant of his spiritual condition. So when we pray for the healing of someone we do not know, specifically one who is unconscious, we pray that they may be saved and be healed. The most important thing, far more than an immediate physical healing, that a person's sins are forgiven. It is not always God's will to heal physically, but the sincere prayer of repentance from sin and faith towards Christ is always in God's will. There is evidence that the spirit of prayer done in a state of awareness can comfort a person, but discomfort outside of faith in Christ is temporary and can do nothing of eternal value. My prayer for you who are listening or watching and for those who are praying for the more is that they and he would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I hope that they come to an understanding that physical life is nothing but a vapor, according to James 4 verse 14, and that the only way to have peace with God is to be justified through faith in Jesus Christ. That involves repentance and belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. This repentance and faith is granted by God and completely pays your sin debt and transforms you from a child of the devil under condemnation to a child of God. And speaking of prayer, let's go to the Lord in prayer for the Moore Hamlin and his family. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in a spirit of intercession, for there is no one else to whom we should go, because no one else but you answers prayers. You are the God who hears when we pray, the God who heals when we're sick, the God who restores the broken, rescues the helpless, and redeems the unregenerate. And today we are interceding for the more Hamlin who is hanging by a thread and fighting for his life. As you are the author of life itself, we ask that you intervene in his case, Lord. I pray that you pay him a special visit in his hospital room, where he's lying unconscious and is completely dependent upon man-made machines and doctors. Who are fleeting is this life, Lord. You remind us of this every single day. But today, we pray that you spare his life, Father. Comfort his family, his wife and kids, his mother and father. We pray that, Lord, when he's recovered, that you go a step further with him. We pray that he comes to a saving knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ, who died for the forgiveness of his sins. We pray that you change his heart and mind and that he surrenders his life to Christ. May anyone, Lord, listening to this prayer who is suffering from any maladies may be healed if that is your will, Lord. May those who have not surrendered their life to your Son, Jesus Christ, know that He alone is Lord and He alone is Savior and Redeemer. May they repent of their sin today as tomorrow is not promised and put their faith in Him for the salvation of their soul. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. And at this moment, I'd like to kindly extend an invitation to you to subscribe to the channel if you love and appreciate our content and help us share the videos and spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if this is your first time on the channel and you made it this far in the video, well, thank you for watching. I hope to see you in our next video with Loving Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ.